Yesterday, we also got stronger than expected data on GDP growth. So how does this all factor in for the Fed, which is the other big event, of course, next week? Let's bring in Bleakley Financial Group's Peter Bookbar, who is here on set. Peter, great to see you in person. Hi, Melissa. Thanks. Um, so how does this market sell off? How does the Fed factor into the market next week, do you think? Well, I think the market is up so much already that I don't think Jay Powell is paying attention. Jay Powell was worried about, or I should, not worried, focused on tempering inflation through the next couple of years. I say the next couple of years because he leaves in early 2026. He doesn't care whether the S&P 500 is at 5,500 or 4,500. He wants inflation going down to his 2% target while keeping unemployment from not going much further higher. Mm -hmm. In terms of, though, how the economic data stack up to what we're seeing out of earnings season, you put out a note this morning saying it just doesn't, you look under the hood and you're not getting good data points from companies. So how, how do you parse that out? I, I really think that all this government spending is having such a, a dilutive impact on the economy. And it's not just directly where, okay, the government is financing the manufacturing facility that's being built in Kansas. But all the workers that are working on building it, they have money. They're going out for dinner. They're doing this. They're doing that. But if you look at what corporate America has to say, I see a one to one and a half percent economy. It's extraordinarily mixed. It's very uneven. And I don't see, I don't think the 2.8 percent GDP number really is reflective of what we're seeing. I think the one and a half, maybe two best, but the economy is very uneven right now. Peter, thanks so much for being here. You mentioned like unevenness in the in the economy and uh, and having a hard time kind of reading through in terms of economic data. Can you speak to the juxtaposition that we've seen between Q1 da economic data and Q2 data and how you might reconcile that in terms of trying to get a read through on what the next Fed move might be? Well, I'll average both, and GDP growth was about two percent. Now, going looking at the second half of the year, if the unemployment rate continues to tick higher, then that two percent can get into the ones. And, you know, we debate recession, no recession, but, you know, one-ish percent economy almost feels like there's very little growth. And, again, you run through what corporate America has to say, and mac challenging macroeconomic environment, if I had a dollar for every CEO that said that, not just this, the current quarter, but for the past couple of quarters. You wouldn't be able to buy much because of inflation, but <laughs> we'll put that, <laughs> that aside. True. Tim, you have a question? Yeah. Yeah, Peter, uh, great to have you on. Sorry I'm missing you in person. Let, let's talk asset allocation because you're in the middle of that as well. Uh, and the fixed income markets are, are fascinating right now. There's, there's some comfort in pushing out on duration. We have some sense that not only do we see the short end coming in, but possibly the long end. Um, talk about this, this uh, and I know how you feel about the deficit and, and what it means possibly for Treasury yields and medium to longer term. But are, are you comfortable uh, allocating more money into fixed income at this point based upon both the, the credit dynamics of the economy? Let's speak more broadly and, and where you think interest rates at least are short to medium term. Well, on the fixed income side, for the last couple of years, I've only been comfortable buying the short end. I, I think we can get this strange dynamic where the Fed is cutting short-term interest rates, but long-term interest rates either stay where they are or go even higher. Because if you're a holder of the 10-year and you're saying, OK, Powell's knees are getting soft. Yeah, I see the economy moderating, inflation's moderating, but I don't want my central bank to get soft. I don't think the 10-year is going to travel the trajectory that we're used to over the last couple of decades, where the short-term rates fall, long-term rates fall. I think we're going to see further steepening this yield curve and potentially in a bear way where long-end rates actually go up as short-term rates actually fall. Hmm. Julie, question? Yeah, Peter, I'm curious your thoughts. You know, GDP to, to the deficit right now is at a level that you would expect with 7 percent unemployment, not 4 like we're at and the consumer has really spent down their own cushions, their savings sheets. So neither balance sheet has really got a lot of cushion for any economic weakness. If there were a shock to the economy, are you more concerned about the consumer or how the government can interact? Well, it's certainly both, because if consumers start to lose their jobs, that's less taxes that are going to the federal government. And that $2 trillion deficit becomes a $3 trillion deficit. And instead of 6 to 7 percent of GDP, it's 10 to 12 percent of GDP. Then you, talk, then you need to start talking about what does that mean for the U.S. dollar. Let's just say the Fed's cutting, but U.S. dollar starts to weaken, oil goes to 100, 10-year yield goes to 5 percent. Like, th these are things that we need to think about as possible scenarios where we're in a different environment than we were in the decades prior to 2022 in terms of inflation, interest rates, and how the Fed's going to respond.